One of the most destructive things about parental alienation is that it makes you hate half of yourself. You are predisposed over time to hate the part of you that is any way associated with the alienated parent. And I didn't even realize or kind of put it all together until I was 25 years old, at least this aspect of what I'm talking about. And I had seen my dad for the first time in 10 years at my wedding, I had invited him to the wedding. And it was, you know, a lot going on. The worlds were kind of colliding. Everybody was uh, together. And so that was a you know big moment. And I was apprehensive about it. I was nervous about what I was going to feel like. And I'll never forget after the ceremony, uh, you know, it's time for pictures and, and everything. And so the bridal party and my best man were all running across this parking lot and we're all excited. And my, my best man, my best friend, he starts, keeps looking at me and I'm like, dude, what? He's like, man, you look just like your dad. And I said, thanks a lot. No, I don't. And so as I'm running, I'm thinking, why did I say that? Like, that's really weird because I don't really know that I feel like that. I don't know that that's a bad thing. I don't know that that's a, a slam. But in that moment, I didn't expect it. I was like, dude, you're my best friend. I look like my dad. I was brought up thinking anything to do with that's like your dad, you look like your dad, anything like that that would be associated as a good thing with my dad was like a smackdown. So here he was telling me like, I see your dad in you. I really didn't know how to react. And, and looking back on it, it, it actually makes sense because the, the controlling parent that's doing the alienation and those that support that unit, what I call, which I call the regime, because the regime is the one that controls the influence, it controls the contact, it controls the perspective that you have on life, and it controls all of the things that are uh, allow you to like live and breathe and be happy, they control all, the, all of those things. So the, the family unit that I had, that, that regime, really taught me that all things were because of them, all bad things were because of my dad. And so when you grow up with that, it doesn't take too long to realize that your associations are very skewed. And so in that unit, I was very much, anything that I did that was great or good was that's because of us, that's because of your upbringing, what we've done for you, what we've helped you with, with what we've supported. That's why you're so great. If you were with him, if you were living with him, oh, I can't imagine what you'd be. You'd just be a little shell of a man. Instead, you're doing all these great things. And that's us through and through. That's because of us. And anytime as a kid, you know, that you sass back or you talk back or you do something that's not, you know, appropriate, just being a kid, boom, you're just like your father. I speak out of turn, okay, I see you. You're, you're just like your father. And that was a slam, that was a, that was a knockdown. And when you've heard that from five years old, six years old, seven years old, eight years old, it's, it, it sets the stage, it sets the tone for the way that you see the rest of your life. So even at 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, 23 years old, a thriving adult who's making great decisions, man, do something out of line, you're just like your father. It's like it says it all. It's like the best marketing message ever because you just say that word and it just conjures up all of these things that they want you to believe. And so I just realized that, you know, any time that I would think that, you know, I might resemble my dad and I have the exact same hands. I mean, we could be stunt hand models for each other. You know, not only the models, but also the, the, the backup of the backup. We have the exact same hands. I one time said that, Daddy and I have the same looking hands. No, you don't. Or, fine, you think you do? You go live with him then. See how great your life is. Think you got it so bad here? I'm like, oh my gosh, I just said, no, there's no resemblance. There's nothing good in you that's a result of him. 
He's a sperm donor. And so it's just wild to think about that, that you spend your life not looking for those things that you could see yourself in. Or that your humor might be associated with that other parent. And it's such a controlling thing by the regime to make sure that they keep that separate. Good is us. Bad is them. Bad is him and whatever support system that he might have. And it's really destructive, not just for the relationship, but for, for me. For me going through life thinking that I've got this like bad part of myself or you know, feeling kind of lost in, in some ways if you want to express yourself or think about yourself in a way that doesn't resemble in their image and likeness of what they want. That if you color outside of the lines, you make your own decision. You want to come up with your own you know, thoughts or ideas. That that somehow, if, that doesn't, if that's not in alignment with what they want, that it's bad. And that must be from, from my father. So that was a really crazy time to be in that happy moment with the wedding. And I'll talk more about the wedding and what that experience was like and how that even came together and, and what it was like because it actually was awesome. Um, but, but in that moment of being happy and then having somebody reflect that, it was like, why are you hurling an insult at me on my wedding day? And, and you know, and, and talking afterwards about that, it was, you know, with my friend, he's like, yeah, I just he never really thought about it. Never met your dad, never seen any pictures of him because, of course, in my house, all of, pretty much all of the pictures, the family portraits and things like that, my dad's head is cut out of it. So there's uh, really a scarcity of family photos or, or pictures of me and my dad that I actually have access to um, from, from my mom's side of the family because it's literally like revisionist history, like erased. Like some phantom cut out head was my father. Um, so he had never really experienced my dad or seen my dad. And so here he's just kind of seeing me in a different way as we're running and I see him looking at me. It's just really wild to think about how that happens. So, you know, when you're thinking about this idea of parental alienation, it's really difficult to to come to terms with the fact that you've got somebody else who's out there that's taking anything that's good, anything that you might want to bring to your child, a thought, a, a love, a compassion, a forgiveness, anything like that. They're getting the exact opposite. And whatever you're doing that is good is just completely is just completely looked on and twisted in such a way that just denotes all things bad. It's really destructive and it's really abusive not only to the relationship but also to the individual you're stripping that away from them you're stripping an identity away from them or in some instances depending on when the alienation started like me you're not even allowing it to grow and if it does grow smack it back down so that's that's really uh, sort of my story about hating half myself <laughs>